Hi everyone, my name is Nicola Driolin and in this video I'm going to talk about the IO mobility and the so-called collision cross-section, here abbreviated as CCS. I will not follow the standard approach, I will try to find the intrinsic sense of the CCS values instead and by doing so I will simplify the mathematical formulae and physical theories in order to make them more appetible. For this reason this presentation is intended to an audience that is already familiar with the principles of IO mobility or to those of you that are starting and hopefully like me are encountering doubts and fundamental questions in the way. I must declare a conflict of interests. I work as a scientist for Waters Corporation, a company leader in the manufacturing and commercialization of IO mobility and mass spectrometry instruments. However, I will try to go through all the arguments in an objective manner and I will be as impartial as possible. The topics that I'm going to cover are summarized in these points here. I'm going to briefly explain what is IO mobility and what uh, we use IO mobility and CCS for. I'm going to talk about the concepts and physical meaning of CCS and the link between the theory and the practice. And I will treat the fundamental low field IO mobility equation from the uncertainty standpoint, explaining the concept of estimation uncertainty. So let me spend 30 seconds on the fundamentals of IMS. In general terms, IO mobility is a technology that allows the separation of ionized molecules in the gas phase. Ions are separated because they are accelerated by an electric field and decelerated by the collisions with the buffer gas, also called drift gas. Why would we need to separate ions in the gas phase? For exactly the same reasons why we use chromatography, that is, uh, to study our analytes of interest more efficiently. Pretend for a sec that you want to measure the length and diameter at the base of a specific tree, which is part of a forest. So now you can look at the forest as a whole and try to guess which is your tree and make your measurements with all other trees interfering with your view. Or you can imagine to separate all your trees and to measure the tree of your interest alone. With no doubt, your measurement will be more accurate with no chance of picking the wrong tree. The same concept can be applied to a group of proteins or peptides. Ion mobility allows the separation of different proteins or different conformation of the same proteins or isomeric species because of a difference, different um, arrangement in the 3D space. And this is also true for a range of different classes of compounds of biological interest such as uh, nucleic acids, lipids, carbohydrates, and so on. Not only this, ion mobility also finds its application in many different scientific areas like petroleumics and chemical material science, uh, to mention a couple. So ion mobility is utilized by researchers for two main purposes. First, as another dimension of separation that can be complementary to the mass spectrometry and mind the words here complementary does not mean orthogonal. There is a reason for this which we will see in another video. Thus uh, we can use ion mobility for increasing the peak capacity. Mass spectra can be filtered um, by the ion mobility in a way that only the ions uh, so product ions, for example, with the same drift time of a selected mass to charge precursor ion are displayed. In this way, we eliminate the majority of interfering ions. Ion mobility can also be used for structural elucidation, and in this case, I, uh, analyte identification and structural measurement can be achieved by converting the ion mobility measurements, so drift time, into collision cross-sections. This can be treated as an additional characteristic of the unknown compound under investigation. Um, and with some experimental condition, we can uh, use uh, ion mobility in addition to mass uh, accuracy as a topic ratio and fragmentation pattern. Uh, 
And with this very brief interview, um, very brief overview of IO Mobility, let's go directly to the main course. When we think in terms of IO Mobility, in my mind, I visualize a triangle where each vertex is represented by one of these features, the drift time of our analyte, the molecular descriptors and the CCS. The challenge has always been finding a relation between these three elements. We could obtain drift time values from molecular descriptors of our molecule through the mobility constant, where descriptors of shape and size uh, present a higher weight. Or we can try to obtain CCS values from molecular descriptors or alternatively obtain CCS indirectly via empirical measurements of drift times. In IO mobility experiments, we measure arrival times. They depend on the peak detection algorithm, but usually a central values of arrival time distributions from which we can calculate the drift time knowing relevant instrument, uh, instrumental parameters. For the drift tube technology, the first IO mobility device that has been invented, a mathematical formula exists that uh, connects the drift time measurements with CCS values through mobility constant. The fundamental low field IO mobility equation is, such a, is, is this equation and is also known as the Maison-Champ equation from the physicists Maison and Champ that studied the mobility of ions exposed to electric fields. Although it, this equation dates back to 1905 um, when Langevin obtained an equivalent relationship for the mobility of ions in weak electric fields and whose work went largely unnoticed for a while. We need to emphasize that a similar relationship that links experimental measurements and, uh, of drift time and CCS is not fully available for different types of IO mobility so far. We can arrive to CCS values through molecular modeling, but as all models, these are estimations. Very different from the determination, for example, of other parameters, such as the mass to charge ratio of an ion, and which is also calculated for molecular descriptors, mass and charge. But the, uh, by contrast to CCS, the mass to charge ratio can, can be absolutely calculated because from 1959, UPAC took as a convention that one mole of the C12 carbon isotope has a mass of exactly 12 grams. And knowing the Avogadro number and uh, the monoisotopic mass of each element, we can calculate the mass of an ion from its molecular formula. The charge is easier because it is um, quantized. The same logic cannot be applied to the CCS because we do not have a true reference value. The cross-section of an ion is impossible to measure empirically if we consider molecules as a dynamic entities. And the only tools available to us are molecular models based on the kinetic theory. When we try um, to link the drift time of an ion with its collision cross-section, we know that the drift velocity, Vd, is directly proportional to the electric field of magnitude E with the proportionality constant K that is called ion mobility constant. The fundamental low field uh, ion mobility equation is the relationship between the collision cross section sigma and the mobility constant. With a basic substitution and rearrangement, we would uh, we, we, can find, we can find the relationship between the drift time and the CCS. At first, this, uh, the CCS seems quite easy to, to obtain from ion mobility measurements, although there are a few considerations that need to be made. So normally, uh, a physician tries to find a relationship between two quantities which he or she can measure. If we want to find the physical relationship between the CCS and the drift time, we should first make some measurements and then try to derive a mathematical formula with physical meaning that connects these quantities. 
The problem is that, in contrast to the drift time, the CCS of an ion is impossible to measure directly. However, we do have a quantitative relationship, which has been derived by a statistical approach using the momentum transfer theory um, to balance the ion energy and the momentum gain in the electric field and lost in the buffer gas collision. Here we treat, if we, uh, if we treat ions like rigid spheres, our collision cross-section is equal to sigma, that is a projection cross-section. And this is the animation that Waters usually propose to give the idea of the CCS. We can easily visualize a model structure of a polyatomic ion by placing spheres at the position of each atom and projecting a shadow of the molecule onto a screen obtaining an area usually expressed in Armstrong squared, which is a cross-section area corresponding to the collision area and averaging the projection cross-section over all possible molecule orientations yields an average cross-section. Here we need to enter the world of molecular modeling for a second. Um, the concept of projection cross-section was first advanced by Mack in uh, 1925. He developed the projection approximation model and calculated the collision, the cross-sectional areas of molecules from the diffusion coefficients by means of the stefan maxwell genes equation. We can see two examples here, anthracene on the left and naphthalene on the right. Using this type of model to test candidate structure of molecules with unknown, um, unknown structure only works um, if the atomic radii are known. The problem is that ions are not rigid spheres and atomic radii are not constant from, this, from system to system, uh, are not constant from molecule to molecule and even from conformation to conformation of the same molecule. For example, it was found that the fullerene carbon atom, um, the radius of the fullerene carbon atom measured at 300 Kelvin is not the same as that at 400 Kelvin. Similarly, a carbon atom of fullerene C60 does not have the same radius as a carbon of uh, glycine. And again, the glycine atomic radii in the free amino acid are not the same as those of glycine embedded into a protein. This means that using the simple projection cross-section with fixed, with fixed atomic radii can lead to errors when, we, when comparing its prediction to um, ion mobility data. There is another problem. The experimental quantity that we measure is a drift time, which can lead to the mobility constant. If we want to use ion mobility data to derive the CCS from, from our experiments, in the fundamental law uh, field ion mobility equation, sigma must be converted from a projection cross-section to a collision cross-section, which means, which means that we need to take into account the average area exposed to collisions with the buffer gas. To do so, a momentum transfer cross-section must be evaluated, and the momentum transfer depends on the scattering angle of the colliding particles and this parameter is not considered in the projection approximation model of Mach. In particle physics, momentum transfer is the amount of momentum that one particle gives to another particle. The momentum P is the vectorial product of the mass of a particle and its velocity. In other words, uh, momentum transfer Q is the variation of momentum of a particle that is colliding with a second particle. From the second principle, from the second uh, kinetic law, we know that the force applied to a material point is equal to the derivative of the momentum p with respect to the time. For calculating the momentum transfer, we should measure the velocity of each particle before and after the collision, as the delta momentum is integral 
of the force in the delta time between T1 and T2. We should then transition from the concept of collision cross-section to collision integral cross-section. The collision integral is related to the scattering angle, which is the angle between the trajectory before and after the collision. If the particles can be treated as hard spheres that interact by direct contact, the effective momentum transfer cross-section omega for the collisions of, of, of a pair of um, particles is equal to sigma. By contrast, uh, for particles with concave surfaces where multiple bunches of the surfaces are possible within one collision trajectory, the calculation of omega is more complex. The Jarrell's group developed the exact hard sphere scattering model, EHS, that takes into account the complexity of the scattering angle, um, which is um, which can be referred to key in this in this formula. Um, so it considers key of concave bigger ions, and this accounts for multiple collisions where a trajectory is reflected from one part of the cluster to another part. And since all polyatomic ions consist of discrete atoms, parts of their surfaces are technically concave. Consequently, the exact hard sphere collision integrals of all polyatomic ions deviate from their projections. Essentially, they have developed a computer code um, able to find the true hard sphere collision integral for an arbitrary body, and this is accomplished by solving numerically the equation here reported. The same authors realized that, especially for small ions and at room temperature or even below, the effect of long range potential in the ion neutral interaction is not negligible. And they have developed a model named uh, trajectory model, which accounts for both short and long range interactions. The first term in this expression is a sum of the two body 6 and 12 interactions. And the second term is the ion induced dipole interaction. Here we assume that the charge is distributed equally over the ion. And in this equation, epsilon and sigma are the Leonard Jones parameters. Epsilon is the well depth and sigma is the distance um, where the potential becomes positive. Alpha is the polar polarizability of the buffer gas. N is the number of atoms in, uh, in the ion. And Ri, Xi, Yi and Zi are coordinates that define the relative positions of the atoms with respect to the buffer gas atom. <clears throat> Here I report an image from a review of Gabelic and Marklund where the practical effects of the three models mentioned here are well shown. And it is evident that only the trajectory method considers the longer range interactions as it can be uh, appreciated by the light green lines. It has been found that for some geometries where multiple scatterings are important, the collision integral determined from the exact hard sphere scattering model differs from the orientationally average projection by over 20%. For some molecular systems, the long range interaction between the ion and the buffer gas have an effect of up to about 10% uh, of the calculated mobility at room temperature. In many cases, the effects uh, are quite significant and it results to be necessary to consider the long range interactions. If the objective is to obtain structural information from cross section derivations, the hard sphere type collisions are desirable and uh, the, contribution of, uh, the contribution to sigma by the longer range interaction should be minimized. 
for example, by working at uh, higher temperatures and using a buffer gas without dipole moments and low polarizability like helium. In recent years, a number of different publications that propose improvement, uh, improvements of the aforementioned models have emerged, including local collision probability approximation, LCPA, for the, reducing the computing time of the trajectory method, or extensions to accommodate inelastic scattering. With respect to the projection approximation, the projected superposition approximation employs a mean field approximation for scattering based on the surface characteristic of an analyte and approximates long range interactions via a distance and temperature dependent collision probability. I will not go into more detail here. With the use of the kinetic theory, Mason and collaborators were able to postulate a momentum transfer theory for the mobility um, K, which defines a connection between the most relevant term of a set of irreducibles, uh, irreducible collision integrals, omega, explained by the two quantum numbers L and S equal to 1. In the, formula of o, in the formula of omega enters QD, which is the momentum transfer or diffusion cross-section. And it is given by the third equation shown here, where epsilon is the mean relative energy of collision, theta is the scattering angle, vr is the average relative velocity of the ions, and, and t uh, Tf, uh, the effective temperature is the basically the effective temperature um, experienced by the ions, uh, which contributes to the total random energy of the ions, which is given by the thermal energy and the field energy. Omega, omega is um, is employed rather than Qd in the calculation of the first order of approximation of a mobility constant because instead of a momentum transfer cross-section taken at the mean relative energy, we should have a cross-section average over a distribution of relative energies. In the case of hard spheres, QD is equal to omega. For the derivation of the CCS values from ion mobility experiments, we are used to refer to the second equation of a mobility constant, although we must make an important consideration. Effectively, this equation based upon a series of um, approximations. To start off, um, the most relevant assumption is that the mobility constant k does not depend on the ratio e to e over n because we operate under weak electric fields. The proportionality equation on the drift velocity v is equal to k uh, to the mobility constant pair uh, times the um, electric field is only this this equation is only true at the low fields and the assumption is that under the influence of uh, weak fields the kinetic energy of the ions is mostly thermal here we assume that k is, is, is basically equal to k0, but k is not actually a constant, as it depends on the ratio e over n. And this dependence is more and more important at high electric fields. k is, is expanded as a power series of uh, in e over n, where only even powers will appear, and alpha is the um, expansion coefficient. Recently, Sims and co-workers have come up with um, some very interesting implementation of, and correction of the fundamental low field ion mobility equation, conveniently modified, accounting for the dependency of the mobility constant from the ratio E over N. They address the problem that in modern IMS uh, mass spectrometry instruments, the ion drift velocity may be 10 or even from 10 to 50 percent or more of the thermal speed component and analysis 
using the zero field equation and the low field limit gives gives rise to erroneous cross section they developed the corrections factors for the low field equation from an improvement of the momentum transfer theory and from the well-known two temperature theory um, the authors made an interesting point and said that there has been an imperfect understanding between the chemical the chemical physicists who have supplied the theories of IMS and analytical scientists who use basically IMS for new applications. In fact, analysts move from experimental towards structures, whilst kinetic theorists move from structure towards measurable quantities. And this is one of the reasons that pushed me to make this video, basically to try to find the link between the theory and the practice, or at least attempting to do so. So linear IMS methods such as drift tube or traveling wave IM mobility are supposed to work in the low field limit and assume that the uh, ratio E over N is low enough so that the K is equal to K0. It is presently unclear how low the ratio E over, over N must be for the linear regime to remain valid. For atomic uh, ions in noble gases, the low field limit is of the order of 10 thousands, but recently uh, the ratio over, over N effects for uh, polyatomic ions were reported below even, even below 4 thousands. And I report here a table from a review of Gabelic and Marklung where we can see that typically your over N ratio are up to 15,000 for commercially uh, commercial drift tubes and usually below 160,000 for traveling wave. And the fundamental low field ion mobility equation is valid only at electric fields weak enough so that the drift velocity VD is small compared uh, to the thermal velocity VT, which is um, which is the average ion neutral relative speed at zero field. And here we can see that the traveling wave technology uh, presents typically higher drift velocity compared to the other platforms, which is approaching to the thermal velocity. So this assumption might not be fully justified in certain cases. A second assumption is that only binary collisions ion neutral molecule are important and many body collisions are negligible. This usually means that uh, the drift gas pressure should be less than a few atmospheres. Um, we also assume that there are so few ions as compared to neutral molecules that ion-ion collisions can be ignored and that there is negligible chance of a given neutral ever colliding with two ions consecutively. This can be only applied to small ions, meaning to ions of molecular dimension whose diameter are small compared to their mean free paths, lambda, which is the average distance the particles travel between collisions with other moving particles. Here in this formula, eta is the velocity, uh, sorry, the viscosity of the gas, p is the gas pressure, and m is the molecular mass. This assumption does not apply to macro ions where multiple collisions become important and the derivation of this equation breaks down. Effectively, for macro ions, the gas behaves like a continuous fluid and creeps around the surface of the particle in viscous flow. A third assumption is that ions and neutrals collide like the rigid spheres. In this way, by using the Einstein relation, the average momentum transferred to the neutrals by the collisions is therefore equal to the average momentum gained by the ions between the collisions, where Q, time, uh, Q per E is the force on, on the ion, tau is the mean time between the collisions, V is the vectorial neutral velocity before collision, and V prime is its velocity 
after the collisions. And since the drift gas net velocity before collision is negligibly small, the average neutral velocity can be taken as zero. So V is equal to zero. And the equation simplifies to this. In other words, we assume that collisions have a randomizing effect on the direction of the ion motion and the ion is just as likely to be scattered in one direction as another. Uh, if, if, if we view this in a, in a coordinate system moving uh, with the center of mass of the colliding ion molecule pair, which means that we assume the relative velocity of the ion after collision vr is equal to zero. A fourth assumption, which is a direct consequence of the previous one, is that even if we try to account for the contribution of the field to the ion energy, at some point we have to assume that for uh, conservation of momentum and conservation of energy, only the elastic collisions take place which means that the kinetic energy is maintained after the collision. Essentially, also in ion, uh, in basically in non-completely non elastic collisions, the fundamental law field ion mobility equation remain valid. Although the calculation of the collision integral omega becomes more complex. This is because the Einstein relation um, remains valid rigorously and since diffusion involves mass transfer and mass is, con is, con is conserved in an elastic collision as well as in, an, in elastic collisions we should not expect in elastic collision to modify the diffusion and the mobility very much. For High fields, generally the 1264 type of potential take into account both short range repulsion and attraction forces, basically the Lennard Jones and ion induced dipole interaction are used, where epsilon and tau, tau m are the depth and position of the potential minimum, and gamma is a dimensionless third parameter that measures the relative strength of the tau 6 and tau 4 attraction energies. This model, this model assumes that an ion and a neutral an ion and uh, a neutral molecule behave as center and, and as point center of force with, uh, with the center of repulsion, attraction, polarization, etc. are located exactly at the center of mass. In a system of I to N particles, each with mass Mi and special coordinates Ri, the coordinates of the center of mass is R, capital letter, and the second equation is a rearrangement of the first one, and M is the sum of the masses of all particles. Now, this assumption could be valid for small ions and small neutral molecules, but it is not the case for large molecular ions. And even in an imaginary small molecule, the charge can be well far away from the center of mass, depending on factors like electronegativity, protonation, deprotonation sites, availability of lone pairs of electrons, charge localization effects, and so on. The 12-4 core model attempts to account for such features uh, in a simple way by adding a rigid, rigid spherical core to one of the point center models. Here, A is the effective core diameter, and both the 1264 and the 124 models are based on the assumption that permanent dipole and quadrupole moments in the neutral molecules are neglected. Although we know that in the case of nitrogen as buffer gas, for example, the, the, the diatomic molecule has a permanent quadrupole moment. Finally, another important point to remember is that this expression for the mobility is only the first approximation of a rigorous kinetic energy, uh, sorry, a rigorous kinetic theory for low field strengths. And 
improvements amount to up to 2% for ions whose masses are equal to or greater than the mass of the neutral molecule, which means in the majority of cases. This means that in general for low field limits, K1 is a good approximation of K and omega 1,1 is also a good approximation of sigma. Although to improve the model further, especially for higher fields, higher order terms with uh, indexes L and S higher than 1 should be used. At this point, we came to the conclusion that the term omega appearing in the fundamental equation is not a collision cross-section, but is rather, it is rather a momentum transfer collision integral. And for rigid spheres, omega uh, equals sigma, the projection uh, cross-section. However, it is important to keep in mind that the two parameters are not the same and differences between sigma and omega can reach 20%, uh, especially for geometries with large concave surfaces. But because collision cross-section has been widely used and abused for a long time by uh, practitioners and scientists around the world, including myself, I will maintain the CCS annotation in this presentation, but we always need to keep in mind what its meaning actually is. When we make experiments, uh, what we really measure is a drift time from which we should be able to calculate directly the mobility constant. Although in reality, um, because the I mobility, the, the, because the mobility uh, constant is dependent from the temperature and the number density of the gas, thus it is dependent from the pressure of the buffer gas, and because different systems and different experiments are performed at different conditions, we calculate the reduced mobility. Uh, the reduced IO mobility constant K0, which is more useful for an interlaboratory comparison. Although it is important to note that K0 still depends on the temperature T, on the uh, ratio E over N in the form that we have seen before, and on the nature of the buffer gas. In fact, in IO mobility experiments, in addition to omega, it is good practice to state K0 accompanied by the temperature, gas composition, gas pressure, the electric field ratio, and the E over N ratio, if possible. Uh, so all parameters affecting K and therefore the CCS. A second important consideration is that the fundamental low field high mobility equation is still a model with the approximation and assumption listed before. All the approximation that we have briefly cited um, here are going to feed into the estimation uncertainty, which will contribute to the bias of our measurement, which, by the way, are purely empirical. And we cannot talk in terms of theoretical CCS here, as we are making experiments and the property being measured is not an absolute constant attribute of the analyte. K0 and the CCS depend on the population distribution of ion structures sampled in the experiment, which can be different from different uh, experimental setups. Um, furthermore, we measure drift times, those K0, which depends on temperature, pressure, and gas composition. Then we derive the CCS values through a mathematical model, uh, through a mathematical model, which means that the CCS are not an absolute quantity, but rather a, a derived quantity because they are not obtained directly. Plus, unlike the mass of a unlike the mass of a molecule, for example, saying that the CCS is a physical chemical property of a molecule is not strictly correct because it, der it derives from K. And we have seen that, for example, by switching from one gas to another, K can change. Therefore, the CCS will change as well. 
to summarize the concepts treated here um, ion mobility can be used as an additional dimension of separation which is well fitted into uh, between the um, chromatography and the mass spectrometry time frame um, I want to use the uh, same words that Valerie um, Gabelica uses in many occasions. Eye mobility measures mobilities, not surfaces. And with this, I mean that we need to be careful in what we say. We are not uh, measuring the collision cross section, we are measuring arrival times from which we derive subsequently a momentum transfer collision integral, conventionally called CCS and defined in Amsterdam squared, which is related to the projection cross-section, but it is not the same thing. The fundamental ion mobility, uh, the fundamental low field ion mobility equation, also known as the Meisenschamp equation, is a model, and it is affected by a bias, where the estimation uncertainty plays a role in the derivation of the CCS values. With this, I want to thank you for watching. In the next video, I will go through the methods for deriving CCS values in practice and will give you some insights on why the type of calibrance affects the CCS in traveling wave. Most of the concepts, figures, formulae that you have seen are referenced at the bottom of each slide. In case you want to dig more into IMS and CCS, you have all the information there. If you want to, if you have any comment, consideration, com suggestions, please do get in touch. You can also find me on LinkedIn and uh, on the ResearchGate. Ciao.